Good, you're back. I'm Neom, and today's episode is about meat, or more specifically, words for meat. Please leave a like if you enjoy. The word of the day is abibliophobia, the fear of running out of things to read. But enough about that. Let's get into it. As I mentioned in my last video on language, evolution of language more or less, modern American English didn't just pop into existence. It was part of a long linguistic journey that cut through large swaths of Europe, picking up vowel sounds from this, silent letters from that, before finally being shipped off to North America to marinate an untaxed tea in the blood of the natives for a few hundred years. So ultimately, we got it from the English. But where did they get it from? British English was derived from multiple Germanic languages, which themselves had many outside influences over the centuries. All of that is interesting, of course, but what does it have to do with why pig meat is called pork? Let's jump back in time a little bit to the Industrial Revolution, back to when England was still big on the class system. You had all the people at the top of the stairs, your kings, queens, dukes, duchesses, royal advisors, ministers, both prime and otherwise, and then you had your hard-working, dirt-faced bloke, the street urchins. Part of the use of pig and pork and cow and beef was a result of that class separation. Pig was a large, gross animal that lived in the mud and ate everything you put in front of it, while pork was something to be cooked just right, with a sweet sauce and mixed greens on gilded finery as a plat du jour for the highest of class. Cows were an even larger animal that you had to get up at five and milk daily, but beef was used for medium-rare steaks, pot roasts, and street tacos. The upper class tried very hard not to associate themselves with the lower, and it made it easier if they didn't have to think about the toil and general hard yaka of the proletariat. But where did these words actually come from? Just like our modern English, the words pork, beef, venison, and mutton didn't just spring forth from the void. Let's go back to the linguistic influences of English. Mostly Germanic, possibly some Latin influence, but there is another big one that came along in the 11th century. If you're English, you'll already know it. On October 14th of 1066, England lost the Battle of Hastings to the Normans. Normandy is now a part of that large nation to the south of England, France. Later on, they would have a little war over territory and ruling rights that lasted about 100 years. But for almost two centuries, the ruling class were a French-speaking people, and among the chattels that they brought with them were words. The French rulers and noble people preferred to take victors' rights and continued to speak the language of their homeland, which included using the words they were familiar with to describe the dishes they were eating. Thus, the French pork became pork. The word bioef, nailed it, became beef. And the word mouton became mutton. Experts argue over why venison is called venison, as the French word for it is surf, but it's possible that it originated from the word venor, which means to hunt or pursue. Why isn't there a different word for chicken meat? I'm not sure, but it's possible that it's because chicken wasn't very popular in England for a long time. People would keep them for the eggs, but the meat itself was rarely eaten. And when it was, it was because the chicken had gotten old and stopped laying. And who wants to eat old, infertile chicken? So it was pretty much reserved for the poor. Thus, the French ruling class didn't have much use for naming the meat. This has been the glorious culmination of approximately three hours of research, so forgive me if any facts, dates, etc. are incorrect, and feel free to submit your correction in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe for more content, and ring the bell to be notified about new videos. I'm Neom, and I'll see you next time.